In this video, you will learn how a device can be accessed. The Windows Device Manager can be accessed by the following steps. Step 1. Press the Windows Logo key and the R key on your keyboard simultaneously. Step 2. Type D, E, V, M, G, M, T, period, M, S, C, and then press OK. In this video, you will see all of the steps needed to install and update device drivers. The Windows Device Manager can be accessed by the following steps. Step 1. Press the Windows Logo key and the R key on your keyboard simultaneously. Step 2. Type D E V M G M T period M S C and then press OK. Keeping your drivers updated provides many benefits. For instance, it protects your computer from vulnerabilities. In this video, you will see all the steps needed to reinstall device drivers. Launch the Device Manager. Right-click the device name and select Uninstall Device. Restart your computer. Windows will attempt to reinstall the driver. In this video, let's learn. In this video, let's learn about mounting and unmounting file systems. Mounting is a process used to ensure that the computer is correctly reading storage media. Mounting allows access. For a computer to interpret a file system's data properly, it must be mounted. Mounting is not always automatic. Many computer systems automatically mount and unmount file systems. In the above example, the last entry specifies that a Unix file system or UFS on the forward slash DEV, forward slash DSK, forward slash C0T3D0S7 slice will be automatically mounted on the forward slash test mount point when the system boots. However, in Linux, this must often be done by the user. Similar to mounting in Linux systems, you will need to unmount any mounted file system before you disconnect the storage device on which the file system is hosted. To detach a mounted file system, use the umount command, followed by either the directory where it has been mounted, that is the mount point, or the device name. Unmounting removes access to the file system. If you don't unmount, you risk interrupting and therefore damaging any in-process file transfers. To eliminate that risk, unmount before disconnecting. In this video, you will learn how to conduct common Windows tasks through command prompt. Windows Command Prompt's help files can help you use any command. Press the Windows Logo key and the R key at the same time. Type CMD and then press OK. Let's understand the most difficult part, the syntax, and how to use the options. We'll use a very common command. D I R displays a list of files and subdirectories contained in the current working directory.
To compare it to the usual Windows view, imagine you opened a folder. The folder you opened, if you chose to do anything in it, would be the current working directory. First, let's demonstrate what happens when you type in the command. As you can see, it outputs a list of details about all the files and directories located in the current working directory, which is always spelled out in the prompt. If you read from left to right, you can see it has all the details, such as last modified data and time, if it is a directory, file size, if it is a file, and its name. Let's look at the help file to see what else we can do with this command. Type dir space forward slash question mark. The help for the dir command appears as shown with various options. Now let's look at the syntax. dir is the command. Brackets indicate that part of the syntax is optional. So, how to figure this out? Open square bracket, drive colon close, square bracket, open square bracket, path close square, bracket, open square bracket, file name, close, square bracket. This part lets you specify the directory you want to investigate in the event that it is different from the current working directory. Open square bracket, forward slash A. Open square bracket, open square bracket, colon close, square bracket, attributes. Close square bracket, close square bracket, lets you specify things like whether or not you want to see hidden files, system files, directories, and so forth. The open square bracket, forward slash, b close square bracket, open square bracket, forward slash, c, close square bracket, and so forth, options modify the way information is displayed. Open square bracket, forward slash, o, close square bracket, has additional options you can specify by using the colon and the sub-options listed down in the options list. So, let's try an example of using the syntax guide. Suppose you want to see only the directories in the current working directory sorted alphabetically. Type dir space forward slash a colon d. You can see that it only displays names of the directories in alphabetical order. If you type dir space forward slash t colon a, then you can see the files and directories sorted according to the time they were last accessed. The forward slash t command can be used with various switches such as c, a, or w to sort the file's directories based on time of creation, last access, and last written, respectively. You can combine these as long as you stick to the syntax which specifies that each option must be preceded with a backslash and sub-options must be preceded with a colon. For example, dir space forward slash a colon d space forward slash t colon a. In this video, we will learn about a process control block. A process control block stores several pieces of information regarding the process to which it is associated. The process identifier, or process ID, is a unique numerical identifier for the process. Process states include waiting, running, ready, blocked, and halted. The program counter contains the address of the next instruction that is to be launched for the process. The central processing unit, or CPU register, includes the accumulator, base, registers, and general purpose registers. A stack pointer is required to be saved when the process is switched from one state to another to retain the current position of the process. Memory limit gives information about memory management, 
which may include the page tables, segment tables, and so on. The Open Files list consists of the list of files open for a process. Miscellaneous accounting and status data gives information about the amount of CPU used, time constraints, jobs, or process number. In this video, we will learn about different process states in an operating system. When a user opens a program, it enters main memory and the process enters ready state. The process is ready for launch. For example, the user opens a document in Word and the process enters ready state. When the user starts using a program, the process enters running state. The instructions given to the program are launched through the process. For example, if the user types and then saves the document, the word process enters and exists in running state. When the user opens a second program, the first program enters waiting or block state. The second program enters ready state. For example, if the user opens an Excel file, the word process enters waiting or block state and the Excel process enters ready state. When the user closes the program, the process enters terminated state. The process is completed and all related information is erased from the main memory. For example, when the user closes Word, Word enters terminated state. It remains in this state until all the files are saved and resources are released. After this, the word process is removed from the main memory. A scheduler is a subprogram in an operating system that schedules the processor time for the active processes. The scheduler can move a process in ready state from main memory to secondary memory to manage the time for another process that enters the running state. The process that is moved to secondary memory enters the suspend ready state. This process will re-enter the ready state when the scheduler swaps it back to main memory. A scheduler may move a process from main memory to secondary memory if there is a space crunch in the main memory and the process is performing an input-output or I.O. operation from the secondary memory. The process enters the suspend waiting or suspend block state in this case. The process will enter the suspend ready state when the I.O. task is completed. When the process is swapped back to main memory from secondary memory, it enters the ready state. Let's take a look at the process lifecycle. As a process is launched, it crosses multiple states. Procedures or actions may vary in different operating systems or OSs. This is the first stage where a process is started and is waiting for a processor to be allocated. After the process has been allocated to a processor by OS, the process is ready to run as the processor runs its instructions. The process moves into the waiting state. The process may come into a ready state again, waiting for a user input. The process at this stage completes its task and then moves to the terminated state where it waits to be removed from main memory.